Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel for another vital tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about why, in all likelihood, you are not really doing frequency modulation and how you can do that and what you can do with it. Let's get going. So here we are with our well-known and friendly and reassuring interface from Vital with a bunch of our scopes which will help us understand what is going on in a little while. Our synth now doesn't look like our usual initialized patch for I've programmed a few things to save time during the making the video while I, so that I can waste it telling you that I saved my time. Here I have two sine waves and one is set with the volume to zero. They both have their phase randomization to zero so that they will always go from start from the same exact phase anytime I press a note. And I've set it so that uh, Oscillator 2 will be frequency modulating uh, oscillator 1. What happens if I turn this knob? I suppose everyone knows. And this will, you know, you will see on the scope the shape is changing and there's frequencies appearing more and more in my scope. And there's this sort of strange discrete points in which things more harmonic start to appear. My tuning mostly stays where it is. Kind of nice, right? Now, if I, on the other hand, get this LFO, which here, right now, let me get to so that it is as exactly the same value in phase as the oscillators. You see, this LFO now starts from a node, like this, os this, uh, this oscillator starts from a node because it starts from here. It is a sine wave, this too is a sine wave, and they have exactly the same frequency. If I get this thing to modulate the pitch of oscillator one, and I make it bipolar, as well, makes sense to make it bipolar. What I will get is, well, it has something in common, you might think, but it is also, well, quite different. And especially, you might notice, it is giving us a destructive effect on our tuning. How would I get uh, the same effect I want I get from turning the FM knob? Well, I cannot really get the same exact effect, but I can get pretty close by modulating the phase. If I say that this is modulating the phase, it goes in that direction. It doesn't go that far as why turn it by turning this FM knob. I believe the reason, I mean, I, I believe because I am not sure because I haven't read the manual because there isn't a manual yet, but it seems to make sense to me. I mean, I hope if I'm wrong, please correct me about it. The fact is that this will go beyond modulating beyond one period and uh, well, this one won't. So it will only go from here it's 180, it will go to zero and 360 and not beyond that, not go through another period of my oscillation and uh, therefore it, it cannot get to the extreme results I get there. Now, uh, the thing as you have, might have noticed is pretty different. So why are we talking about FM? Why is this thing called FM when it is actually phase modulation? Well, uh, the maths that were be was behind the realization of the DX synthesizers was actually about frequency modulation. And you can prove with uh, some not so immediate maths, which I will leave a description with a link in the description. I mean, there's, there's a few articles that go quite into detail about it. If you want to geek out and understand all the theory behind it, you're welcome to do that. I will not be doing it in my video. Uh, but uh, you see, there's, uh, there's, there's a mathematical proof they are kind of equivalent, that they can generate the same spectra. But uh, the thing is, even though they generate the same spectra, they don't do so in every condition. You could wonder again, yeah, but why do they call it frequency modulation when it is actually phase modulation? Who knows? I read a theory of someone thinking it was because it was the 80s, it was a time in which there was still questions about FM radio and AM radio, and FM radio was better, evoked an idea of quality of, uh, and then they said, hey, let's call it FM synthesis because people like FM. You know, it's a, it was almost a buzzword for the time. 
And other other competitors who did not have the access to the patent called it in another way. Like, for example, if you go through cork machines from the 90s, such as the Prophecy or the Z1 or the MOS boards you would get into the Trinity or the Triton, they used, they did VPM synthesis, which I suppose meant a variable phase uh, modulation or something like that, which is, but then now they made the Kvolka FM, which is, again, probably the same thing. So oh, the thing we can do, we noticed we can do we can do this uh, uh, we can do frequency modulation. If I go here and I say I control the transpose, I can be modulating the frequency of my oscillator one with uh, this with this other foe, which is key tracked. Then you would say, hey, but you're not really controlling the frequency. Why? Because because what you're modulating here is the pitch, and the pitch and the frequency are not the same thing. They are in an exponential relationship one to the other. You know, like if I have something modulating linearly in the pitch domain, say, for example, from A440, and that modulates up and down uh, by one octave, I will have it go down to 220 hertzes and up to 880. And uh, this is not symmetrical. I mean, it would be symmetrical in the pitch domain, but it is not symmetrical in the frequency domain. So how how do we do we fix it? I mean, well, we don't need to fix it. We can just say, hey, I'm doing exponential FM, as a lot of people have done, like uh, as uh, the as it was, you know, because especially when we 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 were in the, in the olden days of hardware, or even today, you know, there's people do the or the modular people doing connecting cables and sending control voltages around. If you're controlling a pitch which is uh, in volts per octave and you have a linearly changing uh, voltage, you will uh, act linearly on the pitch and therefore exponentially on the frequency. So I can make this become uh, some linear frequency modulation because, for example, I can make a grid here a different size so that I get the peak to be just at one quarter so it's like it's one half of the half and then I get the zero crossing so that they are exactly in half so that I'm deforming my my sign I'm making this into a reverse exponential sign somehow I mean I, I hope no mathematicians are hearing me because they will probably want to kill me for what I just said and then I have this thing and if I play it you will see that it works kind of differently from that other one it sound the effect seems to be a bit smoother but not significantly less uh, ne less controllable like about my my tuning so the thing is uh, one of the things you might think is but yeah but i mean i wouldn't want to do this statically what i'm interested in in is dynamic frequency modulation because you know for typically what would you do with an fm synth you would get say an envelope a short envelope and use it to modulate the frequency modulation amount you know an operator amount in whatever sort of fm algorithm you're building and you get this type of lucky sound or if you get it something that opens up and there's all there's been all there's been all the brass in the world made this way and lots of other sounds. I mean, this is what you usually would do. But if you try to do this thing with our actual frequency modulation, you don't get somewhere very interesting. Because if I get this to modulate this, what happens is that I will have... A, I will have... A, I will have to turn this modulation on. I will get this pitch drop thing, which... Which isn't too nice. If I'm in zero, it's as this effect. If I go, like, let's say, a couple of octave above. I don't know. Maybe you might like it. It gets tuned after the the transient is gone, and uh, maybe you've heard it in a bunch of West Coast records from the late '60s, early '70s. I mean, it was pretty common. You you just throw this thing into a reverb uh, and some delay and maybe some other effects and you will go into uh, acid land in no time. But maybe, just maybe, you're not just into this type of things. I mean, if you are into this type of things and if you are making percussions or experimental sounds or whatever, this is totally an interesting tool. But if you are trying to get properly tuned no notes out of your synths, uh, this messes up things. What can we do about it? Well, we can do a thing. We can uh, make, we can find out that there are sweet spots. Let me get back to this being uh, 
exponential because I actually like it more. And then I'm saying, let me change this thing and say, say here I'm playing an A, but there are places where this gets back to being an A. Here, I'm off less than one cent of a semitone. It is not perfectly tuned, it has a little bit of detuning, which has... I think it also has a, adds a little bit of musical quality to it, and I can just keep it there, and I'm playing a sign and making it generate this thing which is, in my opinion, pretty interesting. And what makes it even more interesting is that it keeps being in tune, even if you also get some phase modulation on it. You know, if I just move this... It keeps making sense. Or even if I do something even a bit more radical, like changing my wave. Let me go here, for example, this is a mess. You see, I have, this is a sign, and this in the end here is a, I don't know, a thing with some harmonics. I'll, I'll add some more, and let me put here some, uh, some spectral blend. Now, it's just an example, I don't, but you see, if I move, works it works no matter what the wave table I'm playing here it keeps being in tune and you see it is completely different this is the sound of this wave table by itself and if I just get my modulation on again I get something completely different I can make good use of it and uh, both by working with that or with adding more and more and more of uh, uh, more other you know audio rate modulations on because I have these other foes which make wonderful things with my with a lot of things I mean I can do a lot with it and if I do it I unbypass it's un now it goes wrong it goes the other way around if I say bypass unbypass no okay it's unbypassed but it's still purple now I'd understand it. Okay. And then, I mean, I can go wild with this and start adding more and more of these audio rate modulations. I can do some frequency modulation on my modulator here. For example, I could do the very same thing. Get this two to be key tracked, uh, get it, um, leave it to minus 12, get it to be a ramp, uh, get it to be smooth, and use this to modulate the pitch in a bipolar way. Maybe I want to tune this as this too. Let me try to do this thing. I, I will t be, t be tuning it. I have to give it some volume or I can't hear it. Now this is a mess and I might want it to be something different like I'm modulating with like, let's say five signs scaled so that it is like si five signs, but it is in, uh, in I'm doing linear FM while I'm doing exponential FM on the other. I will find a point in which this is a C here, somewhere below here, a little bit more. Here. So now I'm having a um, frequency modulated wave with uh, a slight amount of detuning, which I get it back to being zero, which is... which is phase modulating another wave which is being frequency modulated by an operator with a different frequency and that I can also make it stereo. being using only two oscillators, no filter, no saturators, no effects, nothing, and actually only two sine waves being modulated by actually two more sine waves, because this is a sine wave and this is actually becoming a sine wave. This 
this is a lot of sound. I mean, that's the impression I get. I could go way, way more... I could make it way, way harder because, like, for example, I could turn this other oscillator on, turn the level down and say, hey, but I also want to do ring modulation on this one. And I want to, this level is down to the minimum. Oh, right, no, I'm sorry. I need to do RM oscillator 3, not RM oscillator 1, or it will completely remove my, my thing. Not FM, I wanted to do R RM, RM oscillator 3. I liked it more earlier, but you know, it was just an idea. It's, I mean, a wide, wild field where you can find lots and lots of interesting things. I made it higher so it's like. It's all kind of static for now. I mean, I'm not even trying to do it to make it to make it dynamic. I could make it dynamic. It is just a thing of just a little bit of how much I want it to be dynamic and how much do I want this mess to happen later. Now, oh, sky's the limit. Have fun, seriously. I mean, there's lots of things to have fun with. Let me know what you come up with. I'd be very curious. Let me know in the comments. Let me link to me with the sound examples you can get out of this because I think there's really a lot of stuff you can dig out of the of the of the fart zone with these techniques. <laughs> So all this said, it is time for my usual mandatory little bit of self-promotion. That little logo you saw is a Deep Tant Production I'm working with. We do we offer a lot of audio-related services and some one-on-one -on -one mentoring if you want to learn more without having to follow all these tutorials one by one. There's a link to my Gumroad where you can download you can download some patches for Vital, both, both for free and not for free. And there is uh, some other links to my music if you want to hear some of my music beyond the links I promised already about uh, some maths to understand all the frequency modulation stuff. There is also a link to the, the YouTube channel of a friend of mine who's the guy who's making my thumbnails and it really knows a lot about mixing, he makes tutorials too and totally recommend checking his channel out. Also, since you're still here, you bore all my talk and all my rambling about FM and you even bore my little bit of self-promotion, you have to subscribe to the channel. Yes, you have. You really like to hear me talk and therefore you really want to know more about when some content from me is available. So please do. If you have something to ask, some curiosity, something you want to you wanna see in a future video, you know, this video too came from that. I had people in comments asking me about true FM synthesis. Just tell me in the comments, let me know what you think and I will see if I can make you happy and, well, if I know the topic, I will tell you all I can. This said, thank you again for your attention and see you next time.